Patreon exclusive. I don't have a clue on how to achieve this ability to see problems and address them. I don't know how do I get there to have the intuition to like think about that. How do I get to the point where I see the problems in the cu- in the culture that yeah. need to be addressed, and how do I get the wisdom to address them? Yeah, man, that is such a great question, Solomon. And I want to make sure that you hop into our YouTube challenge uh, because we're going to be kind of going over that. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're doing a three-day free YouTube challenge. That is a fantastic question. It's funny. I was just having this conversation with Zach Sparazzo. Like today we were having this conversation of of kind of unpacking some of these ideas. So here, here's the thing. My model of what I do on YouTube is anchored on two things. One, speaking on things that you're an expert in, and two, having a net positive uh, plus, net net positive contribution to YouTube. Meaning that I don't do a ton of videos um, that are, that are, this person is an idiot. Right, like this person's stupid. Like even this this maps video that's that's doing really well and going viral. Like, I don't like dunking on people. Right, so that's just just, just know that that's my my frame. So 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 what what I recommend, and this is my opinion, is that if you're under twenty five and you haven't done a whole lot, I would not try to position yourself as an authority and position yourself as a curator of your taste and your opinion and making that very clear. Meaning that like, say you did a channel, uh, Solomon, and you you were on here like teaching people the Bible verse by verse. Like you were doing what Mike Winger does, right? Like people will probably look at you side-eyed, like who is this 21 year old kid <laughs> trying to teach people the Bible, right? Now that doesn't mean that you can't do that, you can. It's just that there's gonna be a, 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 a lack of authority that you j- because you just haven't experienced enough life that certain people aren't going to respond the same way. Now, if you come on here and you say, hey, my name is Solomon and I'm just gonna share my testimony and this is what's happened in my life. See, you're an expert at your story and what you've gone through already. No one can take that from you. You've lived 21 years of life and based on what you've experienced, you're an expert at that. What you may not be an expert at yet is things like having read the Bible cover to cover six or seven times, like I have, right? Done tons of like theological training. I've never been to like seminary, but I've consumed a ton of Bible study and led Bible studies for 20 years, right? Which is why this this format, in terms of teaching the Bible, is probably the most fruitful thing I've ever done Right, not because I'm like some exquisite communicator. This is just what I've done the most of. I've probably done this more than I've done music, right? Consistently showing up Monday night Bible studies for 20 years. So therefore, when I get on camera, this is just naturally who I am. I'm not faking the funk, right? So the biggest thing I I would say for you is whatever you do, Solomon, do it in a way that's transparent and authentic to who you really are. And that may be more anecdotal and that may be less of speaking as an authority and more as speaking as, hey, I'm a 21-year-old kid. This is, these are just my opinions and my thoughts. And thirdly, um, what you, where you do have an advantage is you're closer to the youth, which means you're closer to culture and curation. So, so, so an angle like, yo, these are the top Christian, five, Christian rap songs that dropped this week. Oh, Solomon is going to be way better at that than I am because I just don't keep up with all the music. I just don't care. I'm listening more to podcasts than my teaching. But if Solomon has a channel and he's just like, yo, 1K Fuel and Lecrae got an album coming out. Right now, it's about your taste. And if you can find these little pockets of artists that most people don't know about in Christian music and it kind of ties it. I'm just giving you one example. It could be about you reacting to Christian YouTubers, right? But even my channel versus like, uh, Mike Winger's or Alan Parr's channel, those guys are five, 10 years older than me. They, they even speak with the more um, certainty and authority. Three things Christian men should stop doing. Like that's an Alan Parr video. I'm not gonna make a video like that, right? Cause I'm, I don't, I don't, right? But, but I'll be a bit more authoritative than someone like Gabe Perot, right? Who's about your age, he's 21 years old. He's mainly on a TikTok space. He has, I don't know, like 150,000 subscribers. He speaks on stuff a little bit differently than I, right? So, so hopefully you're following along in that um, you have to leverage your youth in a way that like I can't because you're younger, you're closer to culture, you're closer to music, you're closer to what's cool. And so can you infuse that instead of trying to position yourself as some authoritative person on 
marriage and Christianity and life, <laughs> right? And not to say you won't be that. You will be that someday, Solomon. You're going to get married. You're going to have a family. You're going to go through life. You're going to get punched in your face a couple of times. You're going to have a crisis of faith. You're going to try to make sense of all the hard questions. And you're going to arrive in a place where you'll have a very different perspective at 35 than you do at 21. So instead of trying to do what I do, brother, do what you do in your perspective, because I think there's a lot of opportunities in terms of curation, in terms of what's what's popping with music, what's popping with Christian YouTube, what's popping with Christian podcasts, what's popping with Christian news, and then you become more of a curator and less of an authority. Is this helping you a little bit just to kind of think a little bit outside the box? Yeah, actually, I really appreciate it because I think I, I think so short term, I'm like, oh, this five years right here, you know? Yeah. But I'm like, as you say, I'm young. I'm 18. I'm you said 25s where you like you might have some authority yeah. in, like, in your to speak and i was like thinking about it you're right like how old are you like i'm 36 bro i'm about to be 37 this month yeah you you've gone through life you've you've been the way you said yeah. punched in the face you probably have a crisis of faith yes or you probably you most likely did yes and so because that was the one problem i was having with the sheet i was like i'm not really an expert yeah but i would say i'm like interested you know and I'm also like I'm I'm planning to attend uh, Moody Bible Institute uh, in Chicago, and I want to learn theology and I want to learn to speak truth into people's lives. So yes, um, being a curator, I think that's why I need to be instead of an expert. And yeah. I, I think that that's yeah, that really helps. Yeah. me. Thank you. If you follow the model and the consistency. I think you'll knock it out of the park. It, it might take some time, but but think about this: there's nothing worse than like finding somebody on YouTube and listening to them and then discovering that, that they're kind of a fraud, right? Like they don't really know what they're talking about, right? You don't ever want to be that guy. So I, I much rather you learn theology and then live out your theology in a marriage, in a business, as an employee, as a son, than to regurgitate something you've just learned because that's called the Dunning-Kruger effect, which I'm going to get into the on the three-day YouTube challenge, which you guys should all sign up for. The link is in the description. The, the Dunning-Kruger effect is that there's this bias that we have that when we learn new information, we think we know everything about said topic. So then we just want to regurgitate everything we've learned instead of having the capacity to understand everything we don't know about the topic. There's a reason why I don't speak with a lot of certainty because uh, I know everything I don't know about the Bible. I know everything I don't know about theology, right? Like I have context of everything I don't know. So my videos are going to feel different than, than, than someone that's like 21 on fire for Jesus and they got all the answers. It's like, bro, you know, I don't I don't think that's the that's the format of how YouTube should be. And it's the same thing. Like, like, like pick, pick a topic. Like there's people that like literally have never taken like a science or biology class and they're vaccine experts overnight because they read a couple articles and they think they have all the answers. And it's like, that's dangerous, man. And that's what the Dunning-Kruger effect is, is that people who are the least competent are often the most confident, right? The least competent are the most confident. And then the other side happens is on the other end of the spectrum, people who are the most Competent are often the least confident because they have this thing called imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is when you uh, know everything you don't know, and so then you feel like you underestimate your own level of expertise. So for someone like you, your imposter syndrome might be like, what do people really care about my taste in music? What do people really care about my taste in Christian YouTube? What do people, right? You start doubting yourself. And so I would say lean into the things that you know, which is your opinion, which is your taste, which is your curation, and not into the things you're just learning. Like, oh, I just read the Gospel of John. So I'm going to hop on YouTube and do a verse by verse Bible study of John. Like really immerse yourself in a topic before you step up as a um, authority figure on something. You know what I mean? So um, we're going to be covering this like in depth because I think that is one of the things that I needed to be a bit more clear on in that niche training because it is targeted to someone that is a little older than you are. Like it's, 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 me 10 years ago, you know what I mean? The 26, 27 year old version of me. So one of the, 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 the tips in terms of launching any type of platform, any, any type of uh, product, like be an expert in the field that you're talking about. And if you can't, then just curate, right? Like if you can't, then just curate, lean on someone else's authority. I do that all the time, by the way. Like if I'm going to say something controversial, 
what you'll notice uh, I'll do it intentionally is I'll pull up a Mike Winger video, Pastor Mike Winger, and I'll be like, Mike Winger said it. Y'all go leave him angry DMs, right? <laughs> like I do that on purpose. I lean on other people's authority all the time. So um, the three-day challenge is coming up. Make sure you guys sign up for it. If you're thinking about getting into a YouTube page in 2022 and beyond, uh, this is going to be some really good stuff for you guys to get off the ground. So it's totally free. Three days of group coaching with me in the description. King Stream Entertainment. Bruce Lawn. Yo, thank you so much for making it through this video. We have a free three day master YouTube live challenge coming up. The link is in description. If you're an expert, thought leader, entrepreneur, aspiring YouTuber, make sure to sign up for that. And I will see you on the next video.